Hey there, Ian R. Buck coming to you with a quick little update about a product that we reviewed in the past. It's late 2018 now, and Project Fi has been out for a couple of years so far, um, but there are a few big changes that Google has made to the Project Fi service uh, this year. So I think it's worth revisiting it a little bit and seeing how these, uh, these changes affect the consumer. Way back in January of 2018, they introduced uh, a little thing called bill protection. Um, the price structure for Project Fi is still uh, you pay for the amount of data that you use at a rate of $10 per gigabyte, but uh, once you get up to a certain level, you don't have to pay for any more. So if you are on a single plan, uh, that's six gigabytes, you any anything above uh, six gigabytes that you use in a particular month, you don't have to pay extra for. Um, and then for the group plans, it kind of scales up a little bit uh, as you add more people to your plan. But it does get, um, it, it gets lower and lower per person uh, as you add more people to your group plan. The other changes that they've made were later in the year, in November and December, um, they introduced an always-on VPN. Um, previous to this, they did have a VPN uh, built in through Project Fi, but it would only activate if you were using an unsecured public Wi-Fi hotspot. And it's now always-on, so it'll, it'll be encrypting all of your traffic whether you are on your home network, which is already, you know, encrypted, um, or if you are on LTE, or if you are on an unsecured public Wi-Fi. Um, and I love this because uh, it is active when I'm at school as well as at home, and, uh, and I can definitely report that it successfully gets around the school's block list for websites and apps that they uh, don't want students to access. I have noticed a couple of times, though, while using this VPN that it sometimes causes apps to be confused about like what kind of connection they're being given. Um, for example, I've had Pocket Casts and YouTube refuse to download content because they think that I'm not on a Wi-Fi network, even though I am currently on a Wi-Fi network. Uh, and in those cases, I have had to turn off the uh, always on VPN temporarily just to kind of allow those apps to reevaluate the connection and make sure, oh yes, I am on Wi-Fi, I should download these podcasts. A bit more of a public-facing change that they've made is they have renamed Project Fi to Google Fi um, because... Man, oh man, does Google love rebranding their stuff. Um, so basically, you can kind of think of this as their like, coming out of beta moment, where Fi is now like ready for prime time. It's ready for your average consumer, not just the niche uh, people who pay attention to the tech news cycle. Um, and along with this, they are also addressing Project Fi's biggest drawback. Man, I'm never going to stop calling it Project Fi. Google Fi's biggest drawback, um, they are allowing more phone options. So you can now activate a Google Fi account with any unlocked Android or iOS phone, as long as that phone uh, is running Android 7 and above or iOS 11 and above, um, and as long as that the hardware in the phone supports LTE bands 2 and 4. Um, Unfortunately, if it isn't one of the few phones that is quote-unquote designed for Fi, so that's still that short list of like Pixel phones, old Nexus phones, and the few like LG and Motorola phones that they have uh, listed on the Project Fi website, um, if, if you have a phone that isn't one of those ones, then you will be limited to T-Mobile's network, um, so you won't your phone won't constantly be scanning for Sprint and U.S. Cellular's towers. Um, and you also won't get, you know, the the always on VPN feature. And with that, enjoy the full review that we recorded back in November of 2016.